Good morning, everyone. Uh, and for our um, letter for today, the um, as everybody will readily know, second marriages sometimes creates all kinds of issues and problems in relation to the children of the first marriage. Sometimes the children have great difficulty in accepting the uh, the uh, step parent and leads to enormous friction between the new in the new relationship between the parents. Uh, sometimes it's the other way around. The step parent doesn't accept the child of their um, of their husband or wife's uh, previous marriage, uh, and that creates all kinds of problems as well. In this particular letter, written to somebody who lives in Everett, Washington, uh, we have a woman who writes to the Rebbe and says, look, I have a very good and satisfactory home life and a very good relationship with my husband, um, who is clearly had, has been married for a second time, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, and the Rebbe says to well, I'm delighted to hear that. And I think that I hope that things get better and better because in matters of good and, uh, and uh, there is never uh, a, a limit, things can always be good and good and better and better and better because that is the nature, the nature of good. And I hope that you have many, many open, many channels for God's blessings. And then it comes to the, uh, the, point, of, the point of the letter. Uh, the, the, her husband has, uh, has a daughter from a previous marriage and she's intensely jealous of the relationship that her husband has with this daughter. Uh, and um, he, this, he obviously loves his daughter very much and um, she just feels that in some way or another this is detracts from her relationship with her husband and she just cannot help but feel uh, very jealous of this of this other relationship and she just doesn't know what to do to do about it she can't she can't get it out of out of her mind um, this is not an unusual situation so the the Rebbe says to her look um, in, a, in view of your good relationship with your husband, you've mentioned, if you wanted to get better, the best way for it to get better, to be even strengthened, is if he sees, if he takes notice of your good relationship and your sincere affection with his daughter. It's quite natural that he should love his daughter, uh, and he would also like you to love her. That's the reality. He would really like you to, to love his daughter and, um, and you should understand that his affection from his daughter, instead of detracting from his affection from, from you, is going to make you all the more appreciative of your, um, of your attitude towards her and is going to strengthen your relationship with, with him. In other words, when he sees that you genuinely you know, um, try, to make, try to form a relationship with his daughter and make a genuine attempt to, you know, with all sincerity and everything else to love her and to welcome her and to embrace her and to bring her, bring her in, into the family. But what do you think that's going to do to your relationship with your husband? Clearly, he's going to appreciate it and it's going to strengthen your relationship with your husband. He's going to learn to love you even more for the magnanimity, for the openness, for your capacity to be able to extend your, 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 your feelings, your love for this, for this child. And then he goes on to say, you know, I don't need to remind you there's a principle in the Torah that makes it a duty and a privilege for a Jew to love a fellow Jew. And that applies even to a stranger, you know, to a certain extent, to love that person as oneself. How much more so one should love a child um, because children are very sensitive. Children need to be loved, he says. And instinctively, they will know, I think and most parents will recognize this, they will know if um, the love is genuine or otherwise. They are, kids are really smart when it comes to love and they suss out when somebody's being you know, true and really, they're really um, uh, open and, and loving. And if that's the case in relation to, um, you know, to any child, how much more so, says the Rebbe, one has to have this kind of compassion and love for a child whose parents have been separated and whose father has married another wife. Think what the child how, how difficult that is for the child to be able to, to cope with. Um, and so therefore, you know, all of this is self-evident, but I'm absolutely confident that, if, that um, if you make a real effort to love that child, once you make up your mind that she's in no way competition to you, and this of course is what's at the very core of it, the feeling that this child is deep, that there's only a certain measure of love 
that, the, that a, a person can have. Uh, and in, in, when it's shared, you get less of it. Uh, and this is a completely um, false, false concept because as we all know, there is no measure to love and there are lots of different kinds of loves and you can love in lots of different ways to lots of different people. You can love a, the way in which you love a spouse is quite different to the way in which you love a child. Um, and it's different to the way in which you love a, 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 a um, uh, the way in which you love a, a parent. It's different to the way in which you love a sibling. There are many different kinds of loves and there's space for them all. And he said, if you just learn to love this child, make up your mind that she's in no way competition to you, but on the contrary, see this child as a way of actually potentially further strengthening the mutual relationship all round in the, in the entire family. And these, of course, are, are, very, are very sagely uh, and, uh, and, and, and sen sensible words, which cut to the very core of some of these issues in regard to these, uh, these very complex relationships, which, of course, in our times have become absolutely critical. I mean, because there is you know, so much separation, so much divorce, so many kids who are kind of left out you know, in great difficulty as a result of these breakups of, of relationships, et cetera. And the few other families, I'm looking at two of them here, who somehow managed, you know, to be able to bridge bridge this. Eleanor, you've spoken about the way in which you've managed, you know, your own breakup in, in, in a marriage and the decision that you took with your husband, that the children were never going to suffer, that, you know, there was going to be harmony between oh. the two of you for the sake of the children. I know that, Bill, you worked very hard at that as well, you know, in, in, in your marriage. And these are, of course... You, know, you are the examples of, of the way in which the way in which it should be done. There's always hurt, you know. There's always an element of blame. And sometimes the other partner doesn't quite come to the party in the same way. I'm blessed that my wife has absolutely embraced my three children, and they lean on her, and it couldn't have been better. Yeah, I know that. I know that you you married a very special lady. You know, she's got a heart as big as the world. So mm -hmm. no surprise that uh, that she's uh, behaved in that way. Yeah. Anyway, that's the, the, the letter touches on all of these horny, difficult, difficult issues. And it's, it's, it's a good, sensible letter. Okay, well, good day to you all. And we